So let's talk about the airway. Guys, the best way to control the airway, if you are able, is by endotracheal intubation. That's through the mouth. And that goes into the airway. Now, why would you intubate someone if they've got bleeding and an expanding hematoma in their neck? If they can't talk, something's wrong with their voice like that, something's going on. If there's any question that they don't have a patent airway, you would intubate. Listen to me very carefully. The most important word that you will hear me say on every lecture is safety. You have to be safe. If you are on the fence whether or not, whether or not to intubate a patient, you intubate a patient. Why? Why? Because the worst thing you could do is not intubate a patient and then all of a sudden you get into big trouble and that patient arrests. No one will ever argue with you for intubating a patient and then the next day you extubate them. No one will ever, ever argue with you for doing that. So if you are ever thinking, if you ever think, well, should I be intubating this patient? You intubate the patient. And the best way is oral endotracheal intubation. Let me ask you a question. Is altered mental status an indication for endotracheal intubation? Yes. Now understand what I mean by altered mental. I don't mean someone coming in and they're a little bit depressed. Hey, we're going to intubate you. We don't, it doesn't mean that. I mean, when someone comes in and they're wild, they're wild, they're physically wild, they're altered mental status, and you can't control them. Guys, if someone is wild, altered mental status, and you can't control them, you must intubate them. Why? To gain control of the patient. Otherwise, you can't put them in the scanner, you can't draw blood, you can't put IVs, you can't do anything. So remember that. I always, when I was your age, I always wondered about that. But altered mental status, I don't mean depression or something like that. I mean a significant altered mental status is an indication for endotracheal intubation. Now I want to mention something that's going to be on your test. There's something called nasotracheal intubation. What that means is instead of going through the mouth, you go through the nose. And we call it a blind intubation because you can do it blindly. Now that doesn't mean you close your eyes. It means that you don't need equipment because you actually put the tube through your nose and you listen at the end of the tube for air sounds and you pass it down. It's called a nasotracheal intubation. Test question. Is a nasotracheal intubation temporary or permanent? It is temporary. If you do not change it in a day, your nose will necrose, okay? So you might not have ever seen one, but someday you may see a nasotracheal intubation. But orotracheal is the best. So now I got a question for you. What do you do if you can't intubate a patient? Meaning that they've got multiple facial fractures. They're all messed up. They all, you can't get to their mouth, but they need an airway. If you cannot approach it in an oral tracheal fashion, you do what is called by definition a surgical airway and the emergent surgical airway is a cricothyroidotomy, a cricothyroidotomy. 
And you can feel your cricothyroid membrane. It's very easy. You could feel it in your cell. Test question. Is a cricothyroidotomy temporary or permanent? It is temporary. You must convert a cricothyroidotomy into a tracheostomy. So fortunately nowadays, the emergency surgical airway is a cricothyroidotomy, which is temporary. And you convert it within 24 hours to a tracheostomy. Very, very important. And once again, I cannot stress, I cannot stress to you that if you are thinking of intubating or thinking of a surgical airway, proceed. You always want to be safe. And it's much better to stay out of trouble than to get in trouble. So now we go to breathing. Breathing is very simple. Now you may say, well, you know, what's the best way to assess breathing? Pulse oximetry? No, there's something simpler. Watching the chest expand? Well, that's all not reliable. You use your stethoscope. Breath sounds, breath sounds, breath sounds. So therefore, you look and listen to see if they have breath sounds. You can always hear breath sounds, even if the emergency room is noisy. You can always hear breath sounds. 